a rising young star from out west. Here in hometown, Houston, a lot of memories here. Just blessed to call this home. I think his competitiveness came from having the older siblings and having to fight for everything he wanted. An NBA rookie that's won at every level. I always tell him, stay hungry, stay humble. This is just the beginning of the journey. Justice is a unique guy. He's way ahead as far as his maturity goes. The Blue Devils are the national champions. I just remember smiling so much that my cheeks were shaking. He understands the importance of his work outside of the game. To inspire the kids, the youth, to see, to tell them a dream, and that they can, you know, be in my shoes one day. For you, your dream is possible. And on the court, his unique talent comes shining through. Hammer time here in Miami. He has that it quality, that intrinsic motivation to go and do whatever he has to do to win. Just be part of an organization that prepares every day to win championships. That's what I'm most happy for. Inside the Heat, Justice Winslow. Welcome to another edition of Inside the Heat. And hello again, everyone. I'm Eric Reed. In the summer of 2015, the Miami Heat selected Justice Winslow with the 10th pick in the NBA draft. After just one year at Duke, Justice was already highly regarded and not expected to be available by the time the Miami Heat made their draft selection. He was fortunate and excited to be able to secure him and knew right away they had drafted somebody special. Almost instantly, Winslow won the confidence of his Heat coaches and teammates and has made an immediate impact both on and off the court. But this is nothing new for this extraordinary young man from Houston, Texas. Here in hometown, Houston, my house, a lot of memories here, chores, doing homework, you know, just joking around my family, but just blessed to call this home. Here at the Breakfast Club, some good food out here. I like this spot because my Uncle Marcus owns it. His family, they always treat me good, and so uh, keep me coming back. Justice, you grew up in Houston, Texas. Uh, tell us what childhood was like for Justice Winslow. Uh, childhood was fun. You know, I'm the youngest uh, of five, and so growing up, you know, a lot of competition. When Justice was growing up, his older siblings played a large part of his life. We would always go to the gym together, play basketball, you know, work out together. So it was always very competitive growing up with Justice. Every time, you know, the kids was outside playing, we would have to come back in because Justice wanted the ball. I think his competitiveness came from having the older siblings and having to fight for everything he wanted. And what Justice wanted most was to win. That was evident the moment he started playing basketball. One of my earliest basketball memories was playing the YMCA championship. Ended up being a tie game, and then the refs just called the game, and I just remember going in the locker room crying because <laughs> uh, I just couldn't believe that, you know, we didn't win. Your dad played on one of the greatest college basketball teams of all time. Yeah. Anybody that's old enough to remember Five Slamma Jamma and Akeem Olajuwon, your dad was a big part of that. Talk about the influence he had for the basketball uh, on your life uh, growing up. The time we did have together, you know, it was always positive, joking, laughing, having a good time. And so that's one of the biggest things I take away from that relationship. And then, of course, the basketball speaks for himself. He would describe a dunk or an alley-oop um, he and his teammates might have had and just, you know, just the, the way he lights up. Justice gets the same way. This is like my first dunk out here. Fall of my eighth grade year. I rise up, it was a light dunk, but still it was like my first dunk. Like many kids raised under the Friday night lights of Texas, Justice also played football. Number five, the eliminator, Mr. Justice Winslow. But in the eighth grade, he stopped pursuing football when it became evident that his father's sport, basketball, offered him his best chance at sports success. Here's a guy 6'4", in eighth grade, very intelligent at that age of knowing the game. You kind of uh, saw something special early. Entering high school, I wasn't onto the hype of like, well, he's good. To me, he was just my baby. Did you do your homework? The tutors come in. It wasn't so much focus on, on basketball. My mom always put me in a position to be successful. I ended up going to one of the toughest high schools in Houston, and uh, there were some times where you know I had to miss basketball practice or miss AAU trips because you know I had to study for a test or a final exam. So school, you know, taught me a lot about priorities and just discipline. Got lucky. My school liked me. They put my picture up. Look how high my foot is, though. Like, that's wild. Let's talk about the athletics and the legacy you and your teammates left at St. John's High. My freshman year, my brother was a senior captain on the team, and probably one of my top, you know, basketball moments to this moment was that state championship my freshman year. 
I had like 43 points. My brother had the buzzer beater. It was on this bucket right here. I drove. The big man stepped up. I hit my brother. He made a layup, and he just took off. Everybody chasing him. It was like 32 years since we had won. People that are part of that 79 team were there. So it was just crazy. His 10th grade year, all of a sudden, I just feel like I woke up one day, and he was just better. End of 10th grade, going to 11th grade, I'm like, OK, maybe we can do this. Maybe he can do this. We depended on him to do so many things that his overall game uh, really blossomed. I mean, you're talking about a McDonald's All-American, two-time Texas Gatorade Player of the Year, and to have him be so cerebral and so versatile lets you do things that most high school basketball teams can't do. Things like competing for a state championship every year and winning it three out of four years. Won my freshman year, back-to-back -back sophomore year, drop on my junior year, and senior year, we won it. We were hungry that year. We knew that is our last shot, so we got it done. Justice left St. John's on a high note, and less than two years after graduating, the school retired its first basketball jersey, his number 42. Thank you. We might not ever see another one up there. You know, I don't know if there will ever be another Justice Winslow here. A big thing that I do every day now is, is I wake up and I think, you know, what's my legacy going to be? You know, how are these kids going to remember me? You know, I would say that this is a pretty good start. A three-time high school state champion, Justice Winslow is now ready to take his life and basketball skills to the next level. And he did have the nation's elite college basketball programs recruiting him and made over 40 visits to schools to help him make his very well-thought-out decision on which one he would attend. But for Justice Winslow, it wasn't just about the basketball. It was also about academics. And after careful consideration, he ultimately decided to head to Durham, North Carolina to play for college basketball's all-time winningest coach. I know you had to be a highly recruited young man, winning three state championships in four years. Who were the colleges that came after you? And talk about the decision that ultimately took you to Duke. Well, I had pretty much, you know, everyone coming after me, all the big schools, small schools, uh, Texas schools. Eventually, I kind of narrowed it down to, you know, four or five schools. I wanted Justice to go to every school that he thought he had interest in. I just wanted to make sure that he would make the right decision. Next year, I'll get to the University to play for Coach Jay. And ultimately, I decided to join, you know, two of my best friends and Jalil and Tyus. You know, we all decided to go play for Coach K, you know, one of the best decisions of our life. Transitioning to the college level would come easier for Justice after spending time with teammates Jalil Okafer and Tyus Jones as part of Team USA in 2014. Those guys could really score the ball, so it was about ways trying to make that easier for them. Just the biggest thing was just, just finding ways to impact the game, and I think I learned that from my early days with Team USA. As a freshman at Duke, how did you grow as a person and how did your game grow as a basketball player? I grew up as a person, you know, a lot. Just challenging me, you know, in the classroom, on the court. It really just, you know, built my character. Justice is a unique guy, not just a unique player. He's way ahead as far as his maturity goes. Winslow bringing it quickly front court. Darts between the double teams. Two hand jam. Justice was a great teammate. He was willing to do whatever you needed him to do or the team needed him to do. So it's OK for other people to be good. And it's OK for him to do the dirty work. He just wants to win. Winslow, right hand, left hand, drive and slash and score it. He is a true diaper dandy. Watching him at Duke, I saw him get better from his first game to the last game. I think Coach K did an amazing job with his talent putting him in different areas to, to score and to benefit the team. Winslow returns and fires the three. Winslow, his big night continues. And I think as much as a, a defensive president as he was here, I think he went to Duke and kind of took it to a whole different level. Ooh, do not go in there, Justice Winslow. Playing for Coach K, obviously defense is what he gets passionate about. And so from high school to Duke and, and now here, that's something that you know I kind of brought with me. Justice was growing and maturing, and under the tutelage of Coach K, he finished the season ranked in Duke's top three in multiple categories, including points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. 
He helped lead Duke to the NCAA tournament and would have the opportunity to play back in his hometown of Houston, Texas at NRG Stadium. This stadium means a lot for me because I played the Sweet 16 Elite Eight in this stadium, some of my best games in my college career. So to be back and see the, see the stadium, it's nothing like that feeling just to know that you know, this is home and I had the opportunity to come home and play. In front of his family and friends, Justice averaged 14 points and nine rebounds a game in the tournament en route to the national championship. It was a dream come true that he shared with his teammates Tyus and Jalil even before they joined each other at Duke. I didn't know at the time how much we really meant it, but you know, as we got older, you know, we started to really trust and believe in each other, and you know, ultimately everything fell into place. The Blue Devils are the national champions of 2015. Knowing that that was our goal and our dream was to come in and, and win a championship our first year, it was really, you know, indescribable. You can't, can't even put it into words. I just remember, you know, smiling so much that, you know, my cheeks were shaking. It's just one of those feelings that you dream to be a part of and probably one of the best moments of my life. The guy plays for four high school state championships and then goes to play for a national championship. It's just something special about the kid. How difficult was the decision for you to enter the NBA draft after one season of college basketball? It was very difficult. Just knowing that, you know, this is my dream to be at this level, you know, I made a very confident decision. Uh, I really believed in myself. but. Um, it was definitely one of the harder decisions you know, I had to make.